What is up everyone? We are back with the Wheel of Time Season 2 and today we will be talking about the top 5 moments from the first 3 episodes. So let's get into it. Right away let's talk about the first scene in episode 1, the dark friend social scene. In the book this scene is told from the perspective of the man that calls himself Bors but here it plays out a lot differently but with kind of the same result. Ishamael and many other dark friends talk about what to do with Randall Thor, who they believe is the Dragon Reborn. Some of them ask if they should kill him, but Ishamael thinks that he can turn him to his use somehow, so it will be interesting to see how he thinks he can do that. The other interesting thing about this scene is the hint we get as to who some of these dark friends are. If you pay close attention you can for sure recognize some of these hints. We see Pat and Fain there but we already knew he was a dark friend. The second moment I want to talk about is Perrin, Inktar and the rest of the group going after Pat and Fain who took the Horn of Valir last season and finding a dead Merdral at a village. So at this point the group is led by Elias Machera who Inktar hired to track down the horn. In the book this job falls down to Hurin who is a very unique character and is very unfortunate we didn't get him but the group arrives at the village and Perrin who we know has some unique powers sees a vision of the villagers being killed by a Merdral but then the group finds the Merdral dead with metal stakes across his body. So the question is what did this to a Merdral? Perrin asks if it was Padamfein himself who did this and that is the most obvious answer because the Fade was probably traveling with Fane and Fane is insane but the question is why? Now at number 3 I want to talk about Nynaeve's journey through the arches. In the White Tower in order to go from a novice to an accepted one has to go through the arches which are Terangriel from before the breaking of the world. These arches take you through your worst fears from the past, present and future and I want to specifically take a look at Nynaeve's worst nightmare from the future. Nynaeve decides to not return from the arches and chooses to live a very ordinary life. She and Lan seem to be living a perfect life with their child but then they are attacked by Trollocs and Nynaeve has to make the difficult choice of abandoning her family for the White Tower. The archway reappears and Nynaeve decides to go through it and tries to take her daughter with her but unfortunately this is not possible. When she reappears in the real world she is empty handed and heartbroken. But she has passed the test and is now probably unaccepted. The point of the test is for the novice to prove that they want to be a Aes Sedai more than anything and Nynaeve in this moment in one way or another shows that her want of being a Aes Sedai is bigger than anything. She could have helped save her perfect life but as soon as the arch appears she is reminded of the way back and chooses to do so. The next moment is the Merdral fight in episode 1. So a powerless Moraine is ambushed by Son Merdral and here we see some of the unique powers the Merdral have. They can use the shadows to their advantage and we see them blending into the shadows and completely disappear and then reappear but obviously Moraine knows this and uses it to her advantage and manages to kill a Merdral. But she still finds herself outpowered and outnumbered and is completely down for the count but she is saved by her water Lan. Now Merdral are very tough and tricky fighters but Lan manages to catch one by surprise and kills it and then he puts up a fight against another two fates 
but he is defeated and is saved by Beren and her water Tomas. This scene is really cool because we see another example of Aes Sedai and Waters working together. Beren uses a weave of fire to empower Tomas' sword and they manage to kill the fates. At number 1, I have the Sun Chan arriving and capturing the village. So, the Sun Chan Empire is an empire from across the Aerith Ocean that have now arrived to conquer all the land that once belonged to them or more specifically their founder, Arthur Hawkwing. They believe that this land still belongs to them and the people that live there have forgotten this and here we see how they plan on reminding them. Perrin and the group hunting down the Horn of Valir find themselves in the midst of this madness. They put up a really good fight against the Sun Chan, especially Loyal. Loyal is an Ogier and Ogier for the most part are very peaceful and it's very rare for them to fight. But when they do fight, it is brutal and we see it here. It takes multiple Sun Chan soldiers to restrain him and even then they are struggling and once he gets loose he is unstoppable and destroys multiple of them. But then these Sun Chan people show up and with the one power they put a stop to Loyal and the group. I don't want to say just yet what is up with this particular Sun Chan people. But let's just say that the Sun Chan are especially brutal to people who use the One Power. And that is it for now guys. I want to thank you for watching. I hope to see you next week for the next episode. And goodbye.